welcome to my channel. First of all, let me fill you in on this weekend's saga of me trying to put out a video on this channel. First of all, because there was two, like my main shows to watch on Thursday was, and just like that, you know, the reboot of Sex and the City and The Bear season two, which I was so, so excited. And because I review every episode of, and just like that, last season, you know, of season one, I did a breakdown and recap. And uh, I decided I'm going to do that for season two as well. So I did a whole video because there's two episodes that were dropped this Thursday, this past Thursday. Did a whole video talking about and just like that. It was about like a 20 minute video. As I'm putting the video into the computer to start editing, there was like a note, like not, not a note, like a pop up that says castrophobic failure. I've never seen that. I was just like, but I know that the word castrophobic, is that the word? It's not a good word. And I was like, oh no, what happened? So I saw that it didn't went to the computer. So I was like, okay, I'll try it again. So I went on my phone and video gone, gone. And then I went to the computer, gone. There was like no backup, no, no anything. Don't tell me about the cloud and OneDrive and all of that, nothing. I wanted to cry. And then I decided, Okay, there's still the bear. I'm gonna be a day or two late, but it's a show that I love, that I wanna talk about it, so might as well just scratch the two episodes of Sex and the City. I'll do it next week for the third, you know, the third episode, and then just talk about the bear. So this is what I am here for. So hopefully there'll be no glitches, pray for me. I'm so glad that the bear is back. It was one of my favorite shows of last year, and especially now that Succession is done. I've been so depressed looking for a show as good as Succession. I think that the bear is as good as Succession, and it's the best show on TV right now. And last time I checked, it was still 100% certified on Rotten Tomatoes. So I, I always say that the bear, it's a love letter to Chicago and the restaurant industry. And this season, even more so, because they address a lot of, you know, the fact that a lot of restaurants were closing and nowadays it's really hard to hire staff due to COVID. And if you pay close attention, you will see a lot of famous chefs from Chicago in season two. I always thought that it's very rare that a season two of a show can top season one, but The Bear season two exceeded my expectations. So we know that uh, Carmi, you know, he inherited um, the original beef in Chicago. It was Mikey's, his brother that passed away. It was his restaurant. So Carmi took over and in the season, he's turning the sandwich shop into a fine dining restaurant. The restaurant's called The Bear, very fitting. And as launching day is approaching, our main characters, they're, they're kind of go in separate ways to improve their cooking skills. This season, every character was really elevated and we got to see each of them shine. Like first we see Marcus go to Copen, Copenhagen to work with a famous pastry chef played by Will Poacher. Poacher, Poacher, Poacher. But oh my gosh, after seeing him and the bear, what a crush I have on him. Just the accent, his hair, he looks so good, the tattoos, the, the, the chef apron. And I know Will from most of his dramatic work. I know a lot of people follow him because of Guardians of the Galaxy and the Marvel Universe. I've known him since, first of all, Bandersnatcher, Black Mirror, Midsommar, you know, with Florence Pugh, um, and then um, Dope Sick. He was so good in Dope Sick. So as soon as, like, when he popped up on screen, what a delight. He plays a famous pastry chef that, you know, it's teaching all these fancy skills to Marcus, Marcus. And at first I thought he was being really tough on him, but after they had this really like inspiring conversation and they're talking about Michael Jordan and Scott Pippen, I realized that Luca was, you know, he was being tough, but he was just, he just wanted to, once again, elevate Marcus as, as a chef. And Tina, she goes to culinary school and at first she struggles to fit in a bit, 
but she stuck by it and it was so beautiful to watch her growth and um even every time she was showing um carmi or said a dish or a sauce that she made she was kind of like you know shy about it questioning herself and she's like oh i should have done this oh i should have maybe waited a little bit longer and they're tasting and they're like no it's perfect chef great work chef and the smile on tina's face just warmed my heart and richie our boy richie what a transformation oh my gosh i think he's like the highlight of the season he has a whole episode to himself was episode seven and i know everyone is raving about episode six which i will get to it but i almost think that forks which is the episode um richie's episode was was my favorite i mean I, it's so hard to pick between six and seven richie well carmy he sends richie and richie thinks is a it's a punishment at first sends him to work at one of the most famous restaurants in the world like like top best restaurant in the world like three michelin star so he sends richie to stage there and at first richie starts you know from the bottom up you know he starts like polishing forks and polishing wine glasses and then he just like moves and moves and moves and moves it was such i can't I, like i'm actually speechless every time i think about this episode because it was so action-packed like a, full of adrenaline sometimes at one point i was doing this to my shirt i was like oh my gosh i can't anymore it was such a good episode and then funniest part when he's rocking to taylor swift love story you know that song it's a love story baby just say yes he's in the car because he's um his little girl she's a big taylor swift fan and he's trying to like get tickets to go to the concert and then after he leaves the restaurant the fancy restaurant that he's working he's like in the car and he's like marry me juliet you never have to be alone i love you and, and then he's talking to the people in the street he's like drive fucking drive just move marry me juliet you never but he's rocking to the song like this love story song but it was so funny and best surprise about this episode olivia cuomo oh my goodness i'm such a fan of hers from like back when she did that show on netflix broad church you know i know a lot of people know her as the queen and the crown and uh the favorite i think she's on secret invasion now um like a marvel show and she plays terry she's the honor you know the chef of this famous restaurant that rich is um you know it's working at or stage he walks in and he sees her peeling mushrooms peeling mushrooms do you know how hard that is to peel a mushroom but she said it's very calming and you know she shows respect for the craft they have this whole like meaningful inspiring conversation and as soon as she pops up on the screen i was like miller because of broad church have you seen broad church you know she plays a cop with another cop and he always tells her miller so every time i see her i was like miller first it was you know marcus and lucas and then we have the conversation between terry and richie and then uh, you know towards the end we have uncle jay and carmy and even though he's being tough on carmy and you know giving him some hard truth it was still a very inspiring conversation so you know i applaud the writing throughout the season then we have natalie sugar sugar bear um i'm so glad that she got more screen time on the season we found out that she's pregnant and we get to see her relationship with her mother and how heartbreaking it is especially like at the end um the last episode with pete her husband has a conversation with her mom oh my gosh at, at that point i was like wow pete you the real mvp of this episode and then we have our girl sydney who i love i loved her in season one i love this actress oh, she does such a great job at sydney and and anything i saw her in black black mirror do you guys notice she had a, a small part in joan it's awful she's so good but here in this season sydney takes a back seat which it was necessary because her and carmy 
they were upgrading everyone else so both of them kind of had to take a back seat she did have an episode to herself though was the one that he kind of ditched her they were supposed to meet at this bakery and Carmi didn't show up and she goes basically on a food tour she goes to all these restaurants and talk to to all this like chefs and this restaurant owners and she like tries all this food by the way watch this episode i can't remember the name of her episode but watch it with a snack don't watch it hungry because oh, all the food that she's eating mwah, it was beautiful you just get so hungry i thought abraham got short-handed in this season because he goes to culinary school with tina but he drops out and in between him dropping out of culinary school and going back to the bear, I wish we would have seen more of his story, like what he did in that time in between. And in this season, Carmen gets a love interest, which I thought it was about time. I knew it was coming, especially because the whole internet is thirsting for Jeremy Allen. Did I think it was needed? Mm, I'm, I'm torn because I can see how a lot of people would think that it wasn't, but in this season, we needed an antagonist. And I, I, I won't say that Claire, which is, you know, his girlfriend, his friend, who's a girl, as he says, I don't think she herself is the antagonist, but their relationship, because now he's torn between a personal life and having a girlfriend in the restaurant that he's trying to open and build and be successful. Like I said, in that um, conversation that he had with Uncle Jay, he says that, oh, I'm seeing someone. And Uncle Jay says, you know, this is one of the happiest news I've like I've heard in a while. But then he says, uh-oh, you know, this restaurant needs your full focus. You can't split yourself in between the girl and the restaurant. And that's so true. And that's what like kicks him in the butt at the end when he gets locked in the, the walk-in remember his phone rings and it's the fridge guy to fix the handle and then claire calls at the same time and he keeps looking at claire's name and sees all these images of her and pictures and and he gets distracted and then goes do something else doesn't call the fridge guy and then last episode he gets stuck inside the walk-in as far as the actress um i think she's cute she's sweet but I don't know if she's, and at first I thought she was a good match for Carmi because she's a good listener. Um, you know, she, she seems so calm and, and I thought she was going to ground him because he lives such a chaotic life that she could be a balance to him. But the more I saw her, I was like, I, she's so one noted. I think he needs someone that's edgier and more exciting. I don't, I don't know. And maybe it was the way she spoke, she's very like, she, she has that baby voice and very soft. I know, Carmi, it's, yeah, break a leg on stage two. I know, I love you. I had a crush on you. I, I don't know. The way she spoke kind of annoyed me. Ready for episode six? Phenomenal, phenomenal. First of all, I was striking because each episode, it's about 30 minutes. And I was like, oh, 10 episodes, 30 minutes. I can finish the, this in like five hours. And then when episode seven hit, I was like, an hour? What's about this episode that's like an hour? Oh, we needed an hour. It was, I know the last time that I said that an episode of a television show was perfect TV, it was Succession episode three or four, where Logan Roy dies. Perfect television. Episode six of The Bear, same, same. So this episode, it's actually a flashback to a christmas dinner where the whole bur what's the name of the family oh my gosh i forgot bear berzado escape my head yeah berzado family they're all together for this christmas dinner where the mom who's played um by jamie lee curtis we'll get to her but she's the matri matriarch of the family so she's cooking this whole you know um feast it was so i mean that episode has so much conflict and so many big names. Oh, the it was like every time some one of those actors and actresses will pop up like on screen. I was like, oh, oh, you, 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 you. It was. I 
I was thinking about the budget for this episode. Like, how much FX or Hulu had to spend on one episode because it was like big name after big name after big name. Jamie Lee Kurtz, she plays, you know, the the mom, and you can tell right away that she's very mentally unstable. Don't ask if she's okay, you know? Don't ask if she's okay. Jamie Lee Curtis was really going for her Emmy. And I think she better make room next to her Oscars for that Emmy because what a performance. This episode, the whole writing, the build up, the chaos, it was so intense that I was anxious the whole time. That fork fight between Mickey and Uncle, uh, Mikey and Uncle Lee, I was just like, Mikey, Mikey, stop, don't, don't throw that fork, don't throw that goddamn fork, you're about to cause World War Three, my friend, Shh, stop it, and oh, and John Mulaney gives the, gives grace, <laughs> that was such good grace, it was, it was very touching, but you know, I see him, oh, if you haven't seen John Mulaney, um, stand-up special on Netflix, Baby J, watch it, it's really funny, I think a lot of people that watch this particular episode will relate to it, to having a mom that does everything for everyone, but feels no appreciation. And it was also a much needed flashback because there are a lot of shows that do flashbacks and you watch it and you're like, why? Well, this is not adding anything to the plot line. But I thought this, this flashback at Christmas, it made us understand, us as the viewers, made us understand the the characters of the show and why they act the way they act in current time and you know because they come for such a they come from such a dysfunctional family and now you see why they carry such a baggage with them episode 10 the last episode was again action packed full of adrenaline i worked in many fast-paced restaurants front and back of the house and when I watch the bear and how authentic it is, it blows my mind sometimes. The camera work, it's so good. It makes you feel like you you right in there. When when Carmen got locked in um, in the walk-in and then the tickets kept coming, I was like, oh no, crap, it's about to hit the fan. Just like the last episode of season one, remember when they, they weren't set up with the ordering system in the iPad, remember the iPad? And then the tickets kept rolling in, rolling in, rolling in, and it was just a whole mess. I thought it was going to happen here in the last episode, but no. Richie stepped in as the expediter. Um, Sid and Tina, they team up and they're running the line. Marcus is always helping in the background. It was so good how they all work together. And then when that last, like last second on the clock hit and um, Richie grabs the last stick and it's like, fuck you. My fear was that someone was going to tell Carmi that he wasn't needed. Like, hey dude, we did it. We finished the night. We finished all the tickets and all the tables without you. We don't need you. And you know, Carmi was going to like, spiral down and that fight that he had when he was in the walk-in and Richie was outside I thought Richie was gonna throw that on his face like hey we did it without you they said a lot of things to each other but that wasn't one of them also in this last episode we see the mom Jamie Lee Curtis she makes an appearance again she comes in but she doesn't have the guts and the heart to walk in the restaurant and then that scene with her and Pete was so heartbreaking and then that's why I told you earlier that I thought that Pete was one of the MVPs of this episode. The soundtrack of season two was amazing. We go from REM to Pearl Jam to ACDC and it seems like each song was so fitting for what we were experiencing and I also love that we didn't have to wait long for season two you know after season one wrapped. A lot of shows nowadays they're taking like a year two years breaks you know well black mirror took four years you know to come back with a new season so i was happy that we didn't have to wait long for season two and i'm hoping that season three it's already in production but because of the writers strike that's still happening i don't know if they can stop like start filming i also think that season two deserves all the awards they can get i just hope that they don't compete in the comedy category because I think past um, season one went to comedy 
which I mean, season one was kind of funny, but it was like a, a cynical, dark humor. And I, I think season two just proved that it's more of a dramatic show. And I don't see the bear competing with shows like Ted Lasso or Abbott Elementary. So These were my thoughts on the wonderful, amazing, phenomenal season two of the bear. Let me know in the comments down below, what was your favorite season? Season one or season two? And also, do you think that little love story, <laughs> baby, it's a love. Now that song stuck in my head, Taylor Swift. Love relationship between Claire and Carmi was necessary. Do you like them together? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you like this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and also hit the little bell, the notification button so you don't miss any future videos. And I'll see you next time.